Coco tilted her head in wonder. Coco and Amikaze raised their hands in reply to Anzu's question. So, I've never actually played it in my life, but a king's game kind of sounds like whoever like gets the king, straw, wherever the hell, just like, okay, now I will tell you you have to do something or blah. So it could potentially be like, okay, this is what I want to do. I want you to, I want you to go over to Wataru and punch him repeatedly in the face for at least a minute. Then, then you've got a point there. But what is it now that's the 21st century? I'd never played it myself, but I'd heard of it. We're both in the same boat then. <laughs> Everyone except the king gets a number and then... The king gets to say stuff like number X do this and that or number X do this to number X while not knowing what everyone else has. So yeah, I get, take back what I said. You could be like, and punch what throw in the face. Just be like, no, just be like, number X punch number X in the face repeatedly. <laughs> It sounds like the type of game I wouldn't play just because I know that some of the people playing it are probably going to pick risky freaking choices and I'd be like, if it, if I get that number, I'm screwed. And I end up probably just like, you, 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 party, you party pooper, because then I'd be like, nope, fuck that, I'm out. It's like, but I'm the king. You're just like, well, I am a person who goes by my own, you know, I, I'm, I don't know, you don't know what to say. I, 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 I'm out. It's like, you, you party pooper. <laughs> I'd see it like the equivalent of just play like lick a battery. It's like why? Because man, it'd be funny. It's like no, oh you're no fun, you pie pooper. It's like no, that's just a stupid thing to do. Why would I do that? Because I said so. So yeah, I totally would not be able to play a game like that, because I totally ruined the party, I suppose. There's always the possibility of every order being more extreme than the previous one. Whether it's something good or something bad, it's all about up to luck. Watari bowed as he asked her that. We couldn't really stand up to her after she had found us out there. So apparently, like, there's gonna be multiple choices and none of them matter. So we can just pick whatever the hell we want. And the second time we come around to this, inevitably, when we go for Anza's route, we'll do completely different choices there as well. But I think we'll only be able to do this twice because I don't think Yume, Tome, and Sagra's routes would involve this at all. And then there's uh, Coco's route as well, which wouldn't lead to here. Otaru had tears of joy running down his cheeks. Did he really want to play this game so badly? Do you not realize how badly it could turn out? Like if you make a risky choice, just like, Oh, I want to kiss one of the girls, so number X, kiss number X. It'd be like what happened to Teddy in Persona 4. 
It's a bit risque. Well, sure, I don't mind. I can't really refuse since Tanaka said it. I just like, if I was the king, just like, okay, instead of going for risky choices, let's just go for silly choices. It's like, okay, number, say, three. Uh, stand up and do the Macarena. And not only do that, but then, I don't know, just something really, just add some really silliness to it, you know? Because she's the king, queen. Hey, 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 hey! We are slaves. That's probably for the best, Coco. From seemingly out of nowhere, Anzu produced a cup with a bunch of numbered sticks in it. She sure was well prepared for this. Anyway, I'll just follow along and not think about it too much. Seeing how I didn't really have a choice, I grabbed one of the sticks. Yeah, the stick had King written on it. I'm the king? I really didn't want to order anyone around. In high spirits from hearing me announce my low draw, Amikaze did the same thing. You're not supposed to do that, though, are you? Uh, everyone looked at Amikaze. Nanzu sighed and shook her head. True, really, isn't it? I mean, if it was that case, it just wouldn't be as interesting, would it? Well, in that case... We shrugged it off and put the sticks back in the cup. I didn't really want to be the first king, so that took a load off my shoulders. Yoko looked around with a mystified expression on her face. Nakane whispered the rules of the game to Koko. And she mixed up the lots and put them back in the cup. I once again picked a lot without thinking about which one. Hmm. The stick I'd drawn this time had seven written on it. Uh oh, what's it gonna do? Signami showed his stick with King written on it to everyone. He, he's, he could potentially, I don't know what his potential could be, he could be a dictator, a pervert, or a mixture of both, or perhaps he could just be the more likely scenario where he'll just pick a goofy choice. Really? I tried to look calm, but I was actually pretty nervous. What kind of horrible order is that? A very... well... It's more or less what I thought earlier on. It's like, and then have number blah, hit number blah in the face. And it's pretty much the first order. <laughs> Man, I'm so glad he didn't pick number seven.
So she said, but she looked pretty relieved. Oh. <laughs> oh, bad, 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 bad. He has to slap the girl that he really, really likes. He's not going to freaking like that. But Taro slowly raised his hand. <laughs> what Taro said is was flying towards his fist? He said slap, you idiot! Towards Coco's face. Touch. And thus his soft, super soft slap landed. Well, he didn't say that it had to be a forceful slap, did it? <laughs> what, were you expecting him to slap her so hard against her face that spit would come out like... <laughs> you're good for nothing, you're supposed to slap a woman, man! Well, there's no way he'd ever hit for her for real anyway. I once again pulled my lot. Looks like I'm number six this time. It seems weird that it's called the king's game. And then you have girls that end up being the king. It just seems weird. Shouldn't it be like the kings and queens game or something? I don't know. It, or is it just like, it just doesn't have the same ring to it, man. Uh oh, there's another dangerous king. <laughs> you fools! Say what? Anaka moved closer to Coco, and then her soft lips gently touched Coco's face. It was just a regular kiss on the cheek, but for some reason it looked really erotic. Just a freaking kiss on the cheek, for God's sake! Yo, know, that makes me like think. Stupid high computer usage made me think. You know, when like you're a baby, you always see babies being kissed by all the adults on the cheeks, and it just like made me think. Just like they do that, and a lot of times they just no restraint, man. What if they have a cold sore or some shit? You just pass it on. Fools. But if you are king, then what will be your choice to your servants? 
Oh my, looks like Coco is rebelling. The game was just starting, but now the heat was on. There is a rebellion. Everyone handed their sticks back to Anzu and she mixed them up again. I didn't really care for this game at the beginning, but now it was starting to be fun. Let's see, I'll pick that one. There were three sticks left in the cup. Hmm. Which one should I pick? How about left? Here I go! Full of energy, I grabbed the stick. The number I got was six. Looks like Coco is the king for this round. Well done, well done. Well, there's a lot of pressure involved in being the king, so I'm kind of glad I didn't pick it. My order would be give number, insert number here, a nogi. Or something. They're always teasing her in that way. It's like she's such a pervert. It's like nothing's really indicated that, and if anything, it's like Akane and Anzu are a bit perverts themselves, really. Guess that's the point. So, let me get this straight. We, we drew number six, so we probably could have potentially have drawn number five or two, I imagine, and the other one would probably be the king's one. That's my guess from those choices. Uh, that's not a good way to phrase it by saying that it'll look like she's saying that she's not human. Well, seems like Akane didn't notice it anyway. <laughs> I see it could be interpreted like that. What a relief. Man. I'm glad no one picked up on that, because it still has a ways to go with her communication skills. Namikaze started massaging Akane's shoulders. Is there anyone aside from, say, uh, Koko and Amakaze in this room right here that is not like a pervert at all? You know, anyone walking past their room would just be like, what the hell's going on in there? (laughs) 
I think a Connie might might be the biggest pervert of the girls, but then again, Anzu might be as well, because she's like a pervert in a very different kind of way, it seems. <laughs> He's right. Seeing a Connie all flustered and I'm cause looking all shy is quite the spectacle. You know, if we had like pink wallpaper in this room, a Connie would pretty much disappear into the background with all that pink. <laughs> that was it, the king game was really starting to heat up. I'm free. <laughs> it wasn't really as like I was expecting a bit more from the King's game there. I guess if we had picked a different choice it would have had much different outcome, I know. Man, this is getting pretty wild. I mean sit next to each other on the bed is like wow. We have been playing the King game for a good long while now. The singing match on TV were just about to wrap up. None of the times was Yoshiyuki king. Except the first round that didn't count. Or maybe it's still going then. Anzu mixed up the sticks again. The final round. Even though we were trying to look like she didn't, even though she was looking like she's trying, even though she was trying to look like she didn't care about the game, she was the first to voice her concern. Oh, come on. Pick your stick of destiny! Starting with Amakaze, everyone started picking sticks in order. You don't have to tell me that, really. I picked up a stick from the cup. It had six written on it. I'm not the king. I won't say that I don't have any expectations, but at the same time I thought that it might be nice if I managed to get away for the final round. <laughs> Yoshiki was never meant to be king! Nice, congratulations! As Naga said that, she held out her hand in front of me. 
Without thinking much of it, I reached out and shook her hand. <laughs> Nanaka happily shook my hand a few times. She shook and act pretty childish sometimes. Sometimes? <laughs> Looking incredibly happy, Nanaka shook hands with everyone around the table. But seriously, sometimes? That's like saying Yoshiki can be dense sometimes. Hey, settle down already. <laughs> I mean, the doctor just like she acts like so carefree and all that. Well, like there's more to it than simply that, obviously. But that's the side of her we see the most of. <laughs> Okay, number insert number here must throw number insert here out the window and they must stay out there for two minutes at least in the freezing cold. With a mischievous look on her face while wearing no clothes as well. Nanaka scanned the people around the table using her index finger. Why are you asking me? <laughs> I don't give a crap. Um, just give it all that uh, strikes your fancy. Well, having fun is probably the most important thing, so I'm sure there'll be a nice ending like that anyway. I know that, Nanaka. Since you're the king for one, shouldn't you just pick something you think is fun? So sure, I mean, going out with a bang is fine, but you should really just pick uh, what you really want. <laughs> Nanaka won evil smile and surveyed everyone in the room. The entire inn? Six? That's me! What the hell is this? Akane sounded disappointed with Nanaka. <laughs> would be a sight if it was Anzu that to carry Nanaka around the whole in that would be a sight, wouldn't it? I raised up my stick to ever so everyone could see it. Look at his face, he looks a bit grumpy there, doesn't he? Like, hmm. I'm not number six, so I didn't get to take part in the finale. Me. Oh, <laughs> what? Being carried around like a princess. That's quite the dream situation for any boy or girl. What? It is ever a boy's dream to be carried around like a princess. I guess it can't be helped. Anaka may be slim, but I'm pretty sure it'll be rather exhausting to carry her around the entire inn. Okay, here we go! I put my back onto it and picked up Nanaka in my arms. Nanaka seemed really happy for some reason. I guess this might also add to the excitement. Just be like walking past someone in the hallway and just be like, are you ma just got married or something? With those? She'd probably be the heavy one, most likely. 
Just like, imagine Anzu, like, taking a Kane princess carrying her around the entire inn. That just looked really odd. Okay, we're going for a walk then. Or perhaps... Well, I suppose another odd sight would be... I and mean, it's always gotta be Anzu, because Anzu, like, carrying any of them seems odd. But imagine Anzu carrying Tsunami around like that. That'd be an odd sight. <sighs> Man, carrying around something like this is really exhausting. I really don't think so, but... Considering her curves, she was probably really light. Rather than saying that you're heavy... Uh, I would say that people are heavy to carry around, generally. Well, that is true. I mean, you don't simply carry someone around, do you? But still, gah! She's just way too close to me while being carried. Well, maybe it's just because I've got my arm around her back and her knees. But if I put my arm around the back of her head, I'd end up holding her even closer, wouldn't I? Her face is close enough as it is. I'm not! Uh, thank you, or something. Or something. Um... Well, I did say I'd take you one round around, uh, around the entire inn, but... It looks like someone's in the bath, so maybe we should stay out of there. Mm. Damn NPCs! <laughs> Nanaka clung to me tightly. It really is. Maybe we shouldn't have gone outside. I hurriedly turned around and went back inside the inn. I'm surprised there hasn't been any awkward, like moment where trying to open the door and end up just smacking Nanaka's head into the side of the door. Just like, ow, oh shit, sorry. <sighs> Probably. How did it feel to be carried around like that? Really? Well, imagine being carried around a cliff, then. That's true, she did cling to me a bunch of times while I was walking. And that sure made my heart beat a whole lot faster. Uh, glad I could be of service. Uh, what? It all comes back to your route to explain that now, doesn't it? Alright. Ah! Suddenly everything went dark. A power outage. She clung to me even tighter as the lights were suddenly out. That's what I don't get. It's like, oh no, it's pitch black, I can't see a thing. For me, whenever the lights go out, a power outage or anything like that, it doesn't go complete blackness, it's just dark. I can still see, you know? So it just seems kind of weird whenever they're just like so black they can't see a thing. It's probably just a power outage, don't worry. She still kept clinging to me though. I'm so sorry I accidentally messed up and tripped a circuit breaker. I'll go fix it right away, so please wait here a little bit. I could hear the voice of the guy working part-time at the inn from somewhere in the lounge. Don't worry, we're fine. I replied to him, and then there was only silence. The lights flickered on and off a few times, but then the power came back. Nanaka was still clinging just as tightly to me as before. Hey, Nanaka, the power's back now. Man, don't make my heart beat that fast for no reason. Well, uh, yeah. What is? Awesome game. 
Nanaka smiled as she said that. Yeah, yeah, let's go back to the room. I don't think my arms will hold up much longer. Oh, man, no. the closest I, I've, the closest I've got to this kind of situation is like, whenever like I'm holding the laptop, I hold it like with one arm, just like standing there, like if like I just want to show, well, not show, but have like my mother or someone listen to like a music, and I'm using my laptop. I don't hand them the laptop, I hold the laptop while standing and like five minutes pass and it's like Jesus Christ Although we got sidetracked for a bit, we managed to get back to the room Seriously, then I just be like, why did I make this freaking song track tab so long? Dong! Was there a clock tower nearby? Is a man around? There seems to be someone ringing in the new year nearby. That would be a twist, wouldn't it? Scissor man invades this inn in the middle of uh, where are we anyway? <laughs> Did they ever specify where this place is located? The singing contest was over, the yellow team had won, and the time we had been waiting for was just about to arrive. <laughs> Shall we hit the music? Three. Happy New Year! I can't say in Japanese though, because I don't know how it's said in Japanese. Everyone agreed to the New Year in unison. Now that I thought about it, if I had spent New Year's with Yumi and Otani, I wouldn't have been celebrating with everyone being all life like this. I wonder what those two are doing. I couldn't help but think of the people I had left behind on Hatsune Island. Otani, Yume, Sakura-san. Without thinking I touched the necklace Sakura-san had given me. Ah, uh, no, it's nothing. I am celebrating. How does one celebrate? By going, yeah, woo! I looked around and everyone was uh, being pretty noisy. Seriously, is that how you celebrate? By being noisy? At first I was worried that we might be disturbing the other guests, but I could hear laughing and yelling coming from the other rooms as well. Well, of course, it's New Year's Eve. It's one of those days of the year where, like, being noisy bastards is pretty much allowed. Suddenly I heard the sound of fireworks coming from the slopes. Yeah. Looking out the window I saw a huge firework soaring up into the sky. Is it really okay to do something like that without asking? <laughs> Your objective is to communicate with extraterrestrial life with fireworks. You're an, uh, unreasonable as unreasonable as ever. I wasn't! Yeah, Happy New Year! And all that. The girls then return to their rooms. Whew. And then somebody farts. We should probably go to sleep as well. Otaru, we're going to sleep now. Otaru?
Oh god, we have a snorer with us. He's already sleeping. I guess he just barely stayed up for the countdown. The countdown was not for the New Year's, it was actually for sleep. Just like countdown to sleep. It feel exhilarating, as I said. I will see you next time. So that that was something. I'll see you next time, though, viewers. See you next time.